Hey, it's Cody. And it's Satori. And today we are in North Situate, Rhode Island. Yeah, I convinced Cody to take me apple picking. So we're gonna go to the Barden Family Orchard, which is a huge orchard. And uh, we're gonna pick some apples and make some apple pies later. All right, let's do it. Mm, look at all the flowers. Did you just hear that? What? An animal? That rooster. <gasps> yeah, it's made of noise out It's a rooster. Hey, bud. How you doing? Mm. All right, we got our bag. We're gonna get a peck of apples. A peck of apples. A peck of apples. I love you. A bushel and a peck. A bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. Oh my god, there's chickens everywhere. Roosters and hens. And roosters. This place is cool. All right, let's check it out. Enter here. This is such a New England apple orchard, an old colonial house with a huge apple orchard. Yeah, yeah it's nice scenery. And there's the apples. There's a lot of them. All right, where do we have to go? I'm I took a photo of what's being picked right now. So we're here. We just walked in. So we got to look for Honeycrisp, uh, Liberty. What kind are we Macintosh? supposed to get? Usually uh, Honeycrisp and Macintosh. Here's okay. The I hope I'm pronouncing those correctly. Yeah. I just know how to eat apples. Yep. Macau. What come the heck on. is a Macau? Yes, come on. I never heard of that. Stop it. I don't think you're pronouncing it right. Macau. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're trying to say some ancient spell. Macau and Macau and Macau. Let's go down this one. Toy, you're leading me to the bush. Supposed to be enjoyable. Oh, I'm having a blast. This isn't the right kind of apple. No, let me look. <laughs> Best <laughs> apples for apple pies. I bet it's not a Macowan. <laughs> um, honey crisps. Okay, we okay. need to find that. The honey crisps, Granny Smith's. Galas. Let me see what is on the list. Okay, so they are, they're doing galas, they're, or galas, galas, honey crisps, uh, and Cortland's, they don't say. So we need honey crisps and, and galas, apples. Okay. Do you want a Macau? No. <laughs> or whatever you said? No. Nope. They look so good though. You might want to steal one just to eat in the car. <laughs> Cortland, that's not what we need. Um, We're finding everything but the thing we need. Uh, Liberty? Nope. Some say that, but I'm not going to trust that. Um, we're going to pick some of those even though it says that we aren't using those because those are my favorite kind of apple. Okay. Macintosh. Gala! Where's the honey crisp? Where's the honey crisp? Give me some honey crisps. I have no idea where the heck I'm going. Why is there a line on the honey crisps? They said they were picking them. Oh no, they're not. Oh yeah, it does. It does say that. Oh, well, maybe it's a different field. No, they have them blacked out. Looks like we're doing galas. All right. Okay. Oh no, there's a honey crisp field back there, but we'd have to walk through the mounds. <laughs> what? All the way back there and go around, I think. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Wonder if these apple trees can throw apples at us. I don't want to figure it out. Oh, look, it, it just goes on and on. Oh, Getting great. Our steps in. When I say we're making apple pies, it really means my mom is going to be making apple pies and we're going to help um, because she's got that southern charm ability to cook anything like she's amazing okay we got to the end of the macounds or whatever you call them i should be the one with the directions it says blueberries the green nets the blueberries and then the honey crisps are over there okay we'll walk down this path then we have to go through blueberries to get to the apples again this is a huge orchard apples yeah. Please tell me those aren't blocked off too, because I just walked. No. Whoa. 
just fell on my face. Honey crisp. Honey crisp. All right. How do we know if they're ready? Yeah, just take them. I like that one. Poison apple. <laughs> Did you almost <laughs> There was a hole there. there isn't. Yes, there is. Where? Look at you. You're way up there and I'm way down here. Yeah, it is. But it's a slope. Pick an apple. All right. This one looks good. I got one. You did? Good job, babe. Here. This one's big, but I... Does, does it need a good? lot of red to be done? Yeah. Does it need, like, a good amount of red to be, like, done? Like this? Yeah. Because this one's really pretty, but it doesn't have a lot of red. It doesn't want to be picked, so I'm not going to pick that one. You're not allowed to do that. Hmm? You're not allowed to do that. Well, yeah. there's plenty of them. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, that's a big one. Apple picking is just me coming up to you and going, look at this one. Over and over again. Hmm. Sorry, happened? that one had a bug on it. <laughs> Don't put that in. Oh, I am. I sounded like I just went in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage the cowardly dog. It's weird how these Honeycrisp apples grow on like a stick instead of a regular apple tree. It's called a tree. No, oh, this this looks like a stick. When you picture an apple tree, you don't picture a stick. <laughs> They're just like s sticks with apples stuck to them. You picture like a yeah, big it's tree. A conspiracy against you, bub. Yep, they all actually, all the apple orchards in New England have said, you know what Cody's going to love? We're going to just get sticks and we're going to glue apples to them. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to figure us out eventually, but until then. Well, yeah, I, I just don't picture a stick with apples when I think of an apple tree. All right, Toy, where are we going now? We're going to go get some Macintosh. Macintosh? I think it's pronounced like Macintosh. Do we know where we're going? Uh, we're going to figure it out. It was back over there. Remember? No. Back where we came from. Alright. Blueberries? I love blueberries. No. Blueberries. Yeah, I love blueberries. I bet apple orchards deal with animals stealing their apples all the time. Well, I think it's okay if an animal steals an apple or two. There's five million of them. Remember when we were working at the conjuring house and a pear tree was put in? And you walked outside and there was a deer eating the pear tree. <laughs> yeah, he ate the whole tree. Gosh. We didn't even get a chance to grow a pear. No. <laughs> grow a pear? <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine coming out here though and seeing like a herd of deer eating, picking up, picking apples off the tree for free? I know, right? Well, this place keeps going and going. I'm going to get every penny worth of this apple picking experience. It's going to be overflowing the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the Macowan. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> I don't think that's how you pronounce it. We're in New England. You just say whatever you think and people know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know. You're kind of different. You say something and it's like a game where we have to figure out what you mean. Like we, the pizza place that we we drive by sometimes the little country yeah and you keep calling it like everything besides little country pizza you're but you like, know what i'm talking about well it, by the time you said little continent i was like okay well i'm starting to be put two and two together we're at the macintosh again sticks sticks with apples on them there's not a lot of apples on these ones they're darker though so you can look close yeah they are Oh yeah, there's some. Oh, a little. They're tart. They're more tart. Oh. <clears throat> hey, come here. Q. 
Can you stop? Stop it. I like the other one better. Not bad? No, because I'm not going to engage with your horrible mistreatment of apples. Eating them right off the tree. Nothing like a fresh apple off the stick. What's going on that one? Hmm? What's going on that one? What are we looking for? Trying to see if there's a better one. A gala. I think we just have to walk down further. Everyone probably picks them off the first 20 trees here. Look at the size of this one. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. Now that one looks like the poison apple. It does. Yeah, if you keep eating these apples, I have a feeling one of them's going to be... No. Hey, you want me to carry the bag and you can put the apple in it? Thank you. You're not picking any apples. Oh, I'm enjoying watching you pick the apple. <laughs> oh, what happened? I don't know. Hey, I picked an apple. You're eating more of them. No, I'm not. How high over do you think I can go? <laughs> Well, see, the trick is, you probably do this. Set it down on the ground and let all the apples. We adjust here. Get off my shoes! Get off my shoes! See, now we have a little more room. <laughs> okay, Harry Houdini, calm down. You know, Houdini didn't really believe in the paranormal, huh? He wanted to believe. Didn't he have like something that somebody had to achieve in order to prove it? He had a secret word that he told his wife before he died that if he ever died, he would prove the paranormal by saying the word. And that's why his, they would hold seances. He died in Halloween, so they'd hold seances to try getting the word. And uh, they never got the word. Does anybody know the word to this day? No, I don't think so. So now if they get a word, I guess you don't know what <laughs> if it's the right answer. Oh, shoot. <laughs> True. The word was apple. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if we could figure out the word, but how would we prove that it's the word? We wouldn't. I mean, we've gotten secret words before, but there's nobody to prove that uh, it's the right word. Maybe we should get some galas. Galas? Mm -hmm. Jeez, half these apples I've never heard of before. And I haven't seen one regular apple tree yet. You're an apple. What? You're the apple of my eye. Oh. These are big ones. Gala. These are big trees. They're very green. I love it. Sticks. I don't see any apples though. Well, yeah. It looks like all the apples fell off. Are we being tricked? Oh, they're low. Yeah, they're starting to come. Like I said, everyone picks the uh, the ones at the beginning. Oh, those are bright. Apples, apples, and more apples. I love apples. All right, Tor. What is your favorite thing made of apples? Um. I love apple, I love apple pie, but I'm more of like a cinnamon apples in like a crock pot, you know, the warm cinnamon, whoa, the warm cinnamon apples. I like apple crisp. Ooh, apple crisp, or like an apple cobbler. Yeah, my mom makes really good apple crisp. Your mom makes really good everything. Yeah. She's just good. She's good at desserts. We got room for one more apple. It's going to have to be a good one. I'm going to pick the best one. Okay, don't just pick randomly. Actually pick a good one. No, I am going to pick the best apple. Now, see that one looks pretty good. See it? Yeah. Just sitting here all alone. Yeah, that's that's a nice one. Yep, this is it. All right, pick it. It's the winning apple. Nice. That is going to make the pie. All right. All right, let's get out of here. Here's our bag of apples. 
that's going to become a pie. Satori's dance moves. This place is really nice. I like this one. I think it's very calm. Definitely a ton of apples. Sticks. Sticks with apples. Don't remember it being like that. I don't know. If I'm wrong, leave a comment in the comment section. What is your favorite fall activity to do? Leave a comment in the comment section and let us know. Maybe we'll try it out. You are most welcome. We'll be back again next year. All right, we stopped off to get some lunch at a Rhode Island staple. Yes, and now if you've never been to Rhode Island, one of the staple foods is a hot wiener all the way. Um, and the thing is you can't really get the kind of Rhode Island hot wiener anywhere else. I think it's because what's in it um, but it's definitely a fatty, really bad for you, but really good food. So this is where we're at, and we'll show you what they look like once they come out. All right, we got them. This is what they look like. So you have onions and meat and celery salt. That's the key, celery salt. Mm -hmm. And um, french fries. All right. Hot. <laughs> good. Let's eat. All right, so we are actually on our way to a private case tonight. Uh, we're helping out a family in Rhode Island, and we actually have some extra time uh, to kill on the way uh, to the meetup spot. So we thought we would stop by and um, see Mercy Brown. Uh, if you haven't heard that story, it's definitely a, it's a sad one. It is, and it shows how um, small towns even in New England in the 1800s during medical advancements and such, these small towns still ran on superstition and their religious beliefs um, as answers for things they couldn't understand. And it's a very sad and tragic case. Um, we wanted to come here during the day because personally we just want to be really respectful to the, the cemetery while we're here. Um, so follow us along and we'll tell you a little bit about it. So not a lot of people know this, but Rhode Island is known as the vampire capital of the United States, and it's known for all the wrong reasons. Now this label really comes from a family story in the 1800s that took place in Exeter, Rhode Island, the Brown family. Now the Brown family story really starts with George Brown, who is right here. Now George Brown was a farmer in town. Sadly, his family one by one started to um, pass away due to consumption, which we now know as tuberculosis. It started off with his wife in 1883, Mary Brown. Um, and then six months later, his 20-year-old daughter, Mary Olive Brown, also fell ill and died. And then within the next several years, his 19-year-old daughter, Mercy Brown, who is sort of the main figure of this story, had passed away. Um, as well as George's teenage son, Edwin Brown, um, he became sick. Um, now the story really tar starts to take a turn when Edwin does get sick because now the town is starting to rely on superstition and different stories, um, different religious beliefs and practices. Um, with everybody passing away, um, they believe due to the symptoms of this illness um, that consumption was associated with vampirism or being um, this sort of spiritual being that would rise and feed on other people in the town. Now in other towns and other cities surrounding Exeter, Rhode Island, there were medical advancements. People were starting to figure out that there were explanations for these illnesses, but in tiny towns where there wasn't much advancement going on, they relied on the idea of vampirism and how to fight back against these vampire beings um, to survive. We're going to walk you over to where the crypt is, where Mercy was kept. Uh, because this was winter time, they couldn't dig up the ground to bury the bodies, so of course they were kept in a crypt. So we'll walk you over there, and the story kind of takes a very dark turn uh, when Edwin gets sick, like Satori was saying. So the village doctor actually did inform George Brown that this was consumption that was taking over his family and sadly causing them all to pass away at such a rapid rate. Um, but the people in the village of Exeter at the time um, really didn't believe that. They kind of pushed the um, modern medical advancements of the time off to the side in favor of their spiritual beliefs. So on an afternoon in March in 1892, very cold New England afternoon, 
a couple of men in the town actually entered um, this cemetery here and exhumed bodies from George Brown's family from this crypt sitting right in front of us. Um, he removed, they removed the bodies of George Brown's wife and two daughters. Um, they concluded that the deceased was kind of leaving the grave at night to consume on the life forces and people in town such as Edwin and other people. Um, first, the men examined the bodies of Mrs. Brown and the daughters, um, finding them to be improperly decomposed. What they mean by that was it almost looked like their hair and their nails and everything was still growing naturally, which now we know that that's not what was happening, but because of the way the skin was and the way the decomposition process was, especially in a cold New England setting, um, it looked as if things were still growing, like they were still alive and almost sleeping inside of, their, inside of the crypts. So Mercy had been preserved for multiple months at this point. When they were exhuming the bodies, they noticed that Mercy was actually more well-preserved than any of the other family members inside of the crypt. Um, when they noticed this, they decided to kind of poke at the body to see um, if the body was still in perfect, almost living condition. And they felt that there was blood inside of the body still that they believed. And they thought that this was fresh blood um, from feasting on other life forms, such as Edwin and others. So so long story short, uh, what they did is they took out Mercy's heart and a couple of her other organs and they brought them over to a nearby rock. It's theorized that this is the rock that they chose. And what they did is they burned the organs. They burned the organs to make a tonic drink uh, that Edwin could drink in the hopes that it would end up saving his life. Uh, now again, all superstition, it did not work. Uh, and it just was a terrible thing that happened to Mercy. And there actually was a few other cases of vampirism in the New England area, which is really sad to think about. Yes, and you know, this case isn't the only reason why Rhode Island was kind of labeled this vampire capital. Um, another reason for this that historians believe is because the way the villages looked at that time with the old colonial houses kind of resembling Transylvania and that sort of setting. So they also kind of gave this old colonial village this label because New England looked like an old European wooden settlement um, where vampirism would take place in storybooks. Now it's said that when they were going through Bram Stoker's office, they actually found a newspaper article um, about the Mercy Brown vampire incident and because they found this article they believe that's where Bram Stoker uh, got the inspiration for Dracula which is um, pretty crazy. But sadly this is another story of a misconception similar to Bathsheba Sherman being some evil witch that was preying on people similar to Nellie Vaughn who um, a couple of school kids misinterpreted Nellie Vaughn as being Mercy Brown and completely tore apart the gravestone and she was labeled a vampire this is just a case of somebody that had consumption tuberculosis they suffered from it they passed away and hundreds of years later they're labeled as some famous monster really well, Mercy, if you're out there, we hope that you are now resting at peace and that all of the people that come to visit you visit you with respect and love. And it seems like people have been bringing you some nice things. Yeah, her gravestone's been put back together pretty well. Yeah, I'm sure similar to Bathsheba, people have tried to rob it and and break it and all different things. Similar to the crypt where the bodies were being held. Yeah, people keep breaking into that crypt thinking that they're going to find Mercy's body in there. And that's another big rumor or misconception or whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's no bodies in that crypt, but that door keeps getting broken off. So they ended up having to build a cement wall to keep people out. Um, but she was laid to rest after that big ordeal and she's laid to rest right here. Well the whole Brown family, if you're here and you can hear me, just know that we're sharing your story, the true story, as much as we can. If we messed up any details or missed any parts that any anybody wants to correct, please let us know. Um, but we're trying to share the true story. None of you were these vampire beings. None of you were hurting anybody. It was just a very sad case. Um, and we want the world to know the truth about you guys. And if you're okay, please let 
people know that come here respectfully. Um, if anybody comes here disrespectfully, feel free to scare them. That would be the funniest thing, I'm sure. But thank you all for your time. All right. Well, that is the Mercy Brown story. Again, it's a really sad one. And uh, we never recommend coming to a cemetery at night. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Let them sleep. They live their whole lives. Give them some rest every now and then. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to spend my time at a cemetery if I was passed on. I would go visit my family. Or oh, I would like be that. haunting so many people. I have a list. <laughs> I have a list. You guys know who you are. But if you're ever in Exeter, Rhode Island, uh, definitely come pay your respects to Mercy during the day. And uh, I'm sure her spirit would enjoy that. I'm sure. But until then, bye guys.